If you are modeling a sprinkler pivot like the one shown, you will note that three of the major structural elements are parabolas in shape. Those would be the water pipe that's conveying the water along the sprinkler, and also these tension rods, which are supporting the pipe through these struts. Now the parabola, which is the pipe, is fairly easy to construct in structural analysis software. Using the equation of, of a parabola, the coordinates of nodes along the pipe can be generated in a spreadsheet. And those coordinates could then be copied and pasted into the structural analysis program. Uh, because that pipe is in the xy plane, it's fairly easy to find those coordinates. However, these tension rods are also parabolas, but they are neither in the xy plane nor in the xz plane, which makes construction of those points uh, fairly difficult in three-dimensional space. And I want to show you a, a, a way that those, com those coordinates can be found relatively easily by using coordinate transformation in 3D space. Three D rotation with a transformation matrix. What I'm going to do now is show you how to take a point in three dimensional space with x, y, z coordinates and find the new coordinates of that point after the point is rotated about some axis. And to do that, we're going to need a transformation matrix. For three D rotation, we develop a transformation matrix that ha that is a 3 by 3 matrix, where we can take the transformation matrix T, multiply it by a vector containing our coordinates for the point x, y, and z, and we will get the transformed coordinates of the new point after it's been rotated about some axis. And we will develop three transformation matrices for rotation about all three axes an x-axis transformation matrix, y-axis, and z-axis. And let's begin with rotation about the x-axis. We are going to start with a three-dimensional axis system, x, y, and z, and we're going to put a unit vector in the x-direction. And now, when we rotate this vector, through some angle theta, we'll find that rotation about the x-axis does not change the vector's coordinates. So we can write the coordinates as, and this is going to be the left column of the transformation matrix. We will write it as a vector. Uh, 1 for the x component, 0 and 0 for the y and z components. Now let's consider a unit vector drawn in the y direction. Its coordinates 0, 1, and 0. When we rotate the unit vector about the x-axis in the positive theta direction, we'll see that the vector coordinates change. And we can find the new coordinates for the unit vector. The y component is the length of the vector 1 times the cosine of theta. The z component is 1, the length of the unit vector, times the sine of theta. And the x component remains unchanged as 0. And we can take these new coordinates and write them as a vector. This will be the middle column of the transformation matrix. The x component is 0. The y component is the cosine of theta the z component is the sine of theta. Next we'll take a unit vector and place it in the z direction. Here are its coordinates 0, 0, 1. When we rotate the axis through some angle theta we'll see that the unit vector's coordinates again will change. In the y direction the new coordinate is the length of the unit vector 1 times the sine of theta, and it's negative now because we're down in the negative y territory. 
the z component is 1 times the cosine of theta. And now we can form the right column of the transformation matrix with a vector that has the new coordinates of the rotated unit vector. So the x component is still 0, the y component is the negative sine of theta, and the z component is the cosine of theta. And now we can combine those three vectors to create our transformation matrix for rotation about the x-axis. And if we use the same procedure for transformation about the y and z axes, we would get similar looking transformation matrices. Now that we have our transformation matrices, we can generate a set of coordinates in one plane and use the transformation matrices to rotate them into 3D space. Now let's use the transformation matrix to rotate some coordinates into 3D space. And I'm going to do that by drawing a simple parabola in the xy plane. And now I do that uh, using this equation right here, y. This is the y dimension is equal to the height of the parabola uh, times uh, x, the uh, x direction coordinate, uh, times 2 times the length. This is the length of the parabola. Uh, minus x all over L, L, the length squared. And I'm going to draw a, uh, a parabola that is 5 feet tall and 125 feet long. And I'm going to use, I'm going to divide the parabola up into 10 equal segments. And when you actually draw your parabola for your sprinkler pivot, uh, the number of segments that you draw, that might be different than what I'm showing you here. This is just a simple demonstration. And so I'm going to divide up our x coordinates into 25 or into 10 equal segments, and the total length is 125 feet. Then I will calculate the y coordinate using this equation for a parabola. Input the x value and also the height and length to calculate the y value. And notice that my z coordinate is zero for all points. It's because I'm plotting it in the xy plane. And here's a, this is a plot of this data. You're showing the parabola. It's not, uh, notice that the height and length dimensions are not at the same scale, but it has a height of 5 feet at the peak and a length of 125 feet. Now I'm also going to plot it in the yz plane. This is looking, uh, essentially looking down from above on the parabola. I'm also plotting it in the yz plane. This is looking at it uh, along the side. You can see it's 100, it's 5 feet tall and the length is going into the screen. So what I want to do is transform this parabola by rotating it about the x-axis. To do that I'm going to need my x-axis transformation matrix which we developed previously. And I'm going to input that matrix into Excel here. And you can see that uh, I've, I have a, uh, a cell set up for my angle theta. And I'm going to then put this matrix into these nine cells, the three by three matrix. You can see the first cell is just one uh, on the left column. The second cell is zero. The third cell down is also zero. And also zero is going across the top row. Uh, but the middle cell is the cosine of that angle. And when that angle changes, you can see it shows up here. This is the cosine of 5 degrees. Notice that Excel uses uh, radians, so I need to convert 5 degrees to, uh, to radians here. Here's negative sine of theta, matches the matrix, sine of theta, and cosine of theta. So this is my transformation matrix. Now I'm going to take my original coordinates that I developed on the previous page, my x, y, z coordinates for the parabola in the x, y plane. And now I'm going to create my transformed coordinates down here. These are the formulas for each uh, cell in this row for my transformed x, transformed y, transformed t. The way it works is I will multiply 
the x coordinate from my first point times the 1 comma 1 position of my transformation matrix. I will add that to the y component times the 1 comma 2 position of the matrix and add that to the z component of the point times my 1 comma 3 position of the matrix. That will give me my x transformed x coordinate. For the y coordinate, I will be using this formula here, shown in the middle. It's going to be equal to the x, original x coordinate, times the 2 comma 1 position of the transformation matrix, plus the y coordinate times the 2 comma 2 position of the matrix, plus the z coordinate times the 2 comma 3 position of the matrix. And for my z coordinate, that will be the formula on the bottom. My original x coordinate times the 3 comma 1 position of the transformation matrix, plus the y coordinate times the 3 comma 2 position of the transformation matrix, plus the z component of the point times the 3 comma 3 position of the transformation matrix. So in the x, y, z coordinates, I ended up using each row, the first row for x, the second row for y, the third row for z, to calculate my transform coordinates. And then I copy that down for each point of my parabola. And now when I change my angle theta, what you'll see is I am rotating now the parabola about this x-axis. So in the xy plane, it looks like the parabola is getting shorter. But really what it's doing is it's, is it's sticking out of the page. You can see that here in the yz plane. Here is the original coordinates shown in red. Here is the rotated parabola. If I go to 90 degrees, the rotated parabola is now falling completely in the xz plane, going out 5 feet. And you can see here's the the red dots in the yz plane show the untransformed parabola looking from the side view and also then the rotated 90 degrees looking from the side view. And if I go beyond 95, something similar to what exists in the sprinkler pivot, it looks something like this. You can see that uh, I can also transform my coordinates about the y-axis using the y-transformation matrix. And I can transform coordinates about the z-axis using my z-transformation matrix. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take these coordinates that I have generated for this parabola, rotated about the x-axis, and I'm going to paste them into visual analysis. Now I'm going to draw a couple of parabolas in visual analysis. and I'm going to use the coordinates that I generated in Excel to do that. First of all, I'm going to plot the coordinates for the parabolas in the xy plane. So I'm going to copy the xyz coordinates, untransformed. I'm going to go to Visual Analysis. I'm going to bring up this dialog. Let's see, it's only allowing me to stick in the x and y coordinates. That means I need to go to the settings and change this to a space frame. And now I can enter in all XYZ coordinates. And I'll paste them in. And I can give them names if I want to, but this is good enough for me. Hit OK. And here are my coordinates showing the parabola in the XY plane. Now I'm also going to draw the points for the transform parabola. Go back to Excel. I'll select my transform coordinates. Copy those and I will paste them into the dialog box here and I'll get a note there were two duplicate positions this is what I expect at the two ends of my parabola I'll hit yes and there we go there are my two points and now if I rotate this you can see that those are not drawn in the same plane now to connect my nodes I will bring up this dialog and I'm going to start from an existing node. I'm going to start from node 1 and I'm going to connect it to node 2. There it is. 
and then from node 2 to node 3. Notice it updates the start node to the previously selected node. So now I've drawn the parabola in the xy plane, which will represent the pipe. Now the parabola of the tension rods. I'll start again at node 1. And this time I'll go to node 12. And now I've created two parabolas. And you can see what those look like in three-dimensional space here. Creating my third parabola would be just be the same process. No big deal. There you have it.